you know anything about Chelsea Chandler or no? Not a damn thing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Golden Octagon MMA Podcast. I am Matt Anderson. On the other side of your screen, I don't know which one it is this time, we got Dorian Rose, and I suspect, as always, he's doing well. How are you doing this week, man? Doing swell, doing great, <laughs> doing fantastic. Um, I would say enjoying the nice little setup you got there with the with the new posters and everything. You got the nice little King's Throne. I was like putting, uh, trying to apply pressure on me to uh, to change up my setup without hey. my uh, with my with my plain background. <laughs> hey man, just trying to like uh, upgrade the channel, like and all that. Just make it just a little bit better, you know, for the viewers, for anyone that looks at us for an hour and a half usually like at least there'll be something pretty in the background for them to look at but um anything happened over this past week of no fights dude um i mean you know me as far as uh being a big sports fan so uh football man that uh that sport is a devil as far as gambling dude because every time you feel like you got something right I mean, it's like you put together a couple parlays and you got a four leg parlay put together. You feel like you got a game called that you think they're going to win. Like I had the Kansas City Chiefs on the last leg of my parlay to win and they lose to the upset uh, against the Colts. And and that it has just absolutely burned my Fando account this weekend. Hate to see that, man. Hate to see that. That's why I don't watch it. I don't bet on it. It is what it is. I don't care about it anymore. It broke my heart, dude. But uh, before we get started, let me give you guys a quick rundown on what to look forward to in today's show. Uh, we got some news, some other fight announcements, fight topics. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about Bo Nickel just a little bit. Uh, and then we'll jump into this weekend's uh, fight card. We're going to make our picks. I'm going to give Dorian a chance to win this here strap back because, dude, it's been a long fucking time now. It's been like two months. <laughs> it's literally been two months at this point since he's had it. But He's got a chance to win it back this week. But before we get started, if you guys wouldn't mind, treat that like button like uh, Dana White and show him what's up for not giving us any fights this past weekend. Subscribe if you are not, and comments are always appreciated down below. Let's get into it, man. So uh, fight news, fight topics. I guess uh, I guess before we get into the bow nickel uh, like um, and stuff, let's just get all the easy stuff out of the way. Uh, and just get your thoughts and opinions right off the jump. So um, I, I guess the first thing on my screen right now is uh, Aspen Lad being cut. Immediate thoughts on that, dude? Um, I, at this point, it, it didn't surprise me because I, I think for her frame, um, she had the Norma Dumont fight, and she definitely looked undersized in that fight. So as far as moving up to 145, and she just consistently ha has missed weight at 135. And, and Dana had even mentioned that, you know, part of the job is making weight. And um, Aspen Ladd has put on a couple of decent fight times and had some good uh, good performances. But if you consistently can't make weight and can't make it to the show, you know, the UFC is going to eventually get tired of it. And uh, at some point, I figured the UFC was going to eventually break and uh, making that happen. Indeed. That's... <laughs> it actually lasted a lot longer than what I actually thought it was going to. I'm like, what, what are we doing here? She's literally only made weight like fucking two times in the UFC and that's it. Uh, literally. So next, so, uh, next one up here, uh, PFL acquires two former UFC talents, uh, Shane Burgos and, uh, magic Marlon Marais. Uh, I guess my immediate thoughts on this is like, Oh, that's an easy way to get Shane Burgos a name. Like, have them fight each other. Shane Berger's going to crush Marlon Marais, even though it's at 145. So kind of odd to see if I can Marlon fight at 145. What's your um, immediate thoughts on this? Um, I was actually really surprised to see Marlon actually come back because uh, I know that he fought for PFL before in its previous incarnation when it was uh, the World Series of Fighting. So maybe it's just Marlon coming back home to where he originally was, but surprised that he actually took the fight or took the deal to go back with them considering his last couple of performances he's been getting finished as of late um and brutal finishes as well 
really thought when he put down the gloves, I really thought, you know, it was a good move. And I thought the same thing as you getting Shane Burgos a name, but I don't really know how much that's doing in favor of, of Marlon Marais. Cause if he goes out there and gets finished again, man, I think all of us are just going to feel a little, uh, feel a little sick about it, man. Um, Cause it almost doesn't even feel like he, he needs to be fighting at this point. And now he's moving up a weight class fighting a dude. That's a lot bigger. So, um, I mean, it could be interesting to see what happens, but, the way Shane Burgos fights and the way that Marlon Marais has been fighting as of late, I don't see it ending good for Marlon, man. Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, so I guess let's jump into our fight announcements real quick. Uh, unless there's anything else that you want to talk about before Bo Nickel. Uh, no, that's what I was going to say. Actually, Bo Nickel. Yeah. One, one more while I'm pulling these up uh, right after our show last week, we got a, a retirement post from the trailblazer. Uh, how do you think that's going? Or do you think he's full of it? Do you think he's actually going to retire? Um, what's up there? Um, I, it, it's hard telling. He's what I believe he's 30 right now. So is that what he said? He just turned 30. So uh, he's, he's young enough to where, you know, I think if he wants to continue fighting, he definitely has the, the capability of doing it. I, I don't think he's going to retire. I don't know if it's more of trying to plot for a little bit more money, uh, considering that he came off of that Hamzat loss, but he took the fight on 24 hours notice. Maybe he's just trying to get his uh, pockets padded a little bit more, but I think with his talent, I, I don't think he's necessarily done just yet. And uh, I guess we'll talk about the the Hamzat move up to 185 um, after our uh, announcements. But hey, so- oh hey, speaking speaking of that, real quick, because I actually wanted to ask you now that you said that, um, I seen a tweet earlier that from Hamzat that actually said Kobe Covington was next, and he put the little eye emoji on the on the tweet, maybe insinuating that. He might be fighting Colby next. So well, as far as I'm like, because like you said, like fucking 185, like two days ago. Yeah. And, and that's the, that's the weird thing because that's when I seen that earlier, I thought that was the weird myself, but he just tweeted Colby Covington's name. He said, Colby Covington's next. Um, oh, do you think that he, do you think that he, he's going to end up staying down at 170 or do you think the smart move for him would be to move up to 185? I want to see him fight fucking Paulo just because it'd be fun, dude. <laughs> because they've just been going at it, dude. Like, I would love to see it. Dude, uh, some of the videos that Paulo Costa has been putting out, uh, all like, number one troll right now, dude. Like, he, he I mean, the, the videos that he's been putting out, whoever has been editing his videos, they have been killing it. Because I sent you that one video where he was calling out Hamzat again, and and I literally watched it about five different times just because I could not stop laughing at how funny it was, dude. Like, yeah, Paula uh, uh social media game has been on another level right now. That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, um, I like the Colby fight. I just – I would rather see him go up to 105. I mean, up to 105, uh, um, up to 185 right now just because, uh, you know uh, – I like the Apollo fight for him. It would be interesting, but that's just me. So, uh, well, I guess we just now talked about the the Hamza fight real quick. But we were on the. Yeah. I see. It, I see it. Yeah, we were on the, the uh, next. on the Kevin Holland retiring. But uh, pretty much the reason that he did retire is because he said that he asked for this fight, Neil Magny versus D Rod, dude. Uh, immediate thoughts on that fight, and that is going to be happening October fifteenth. Um, I, I I like that fight. I like it for uh, D Rod. I think it's a way for him to kind of move up in the division. I think he's what 34, 35 years old. So as far as him making progression in the division, he knows he doesn't have a lot of time right now, and he's trying to get in there and fight a lot of killers as quickly as he can to to maybe climb towards the top and. He's got a lot of talent, and Neil Magny is a little bit older, um, but he's always been a cardio machine, and he's always been able to put on the pace. So I'm I'm curious to see how Daniel uh, Rodriguez is going to be able to handle that pressure from Magny. Fair enough. Um, I don't know if we talked about this one last week. Uh, Sergey Spivak versus Derek Lewis. I know I sent it to you, but I don't know if we talked about it on the pod. 
Yeah, I don't know if we did either, but I, I think for Derek Lewis, I know you would ask me if uh, I thought it was too soon, and I, I'm going to be the first person to tell you for Derek Lewis that there have been plenty of times where he's came off of a bad loss and has taken a fight maybe two, three months later, um, and he's taken fights in quick succession and, and lost them. Um, but I don't think this one's too quick. I think the way that the fight ended with uh, 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 Sergey, uh, it was another Sergey, wasn't it? Pavlovich. Yeah, yeah. yeah Pavlovich. Yes, yeah, so I was like, uh, I almost mixed the two up because they're both Sergeys. Uh, maybe Derek Lewis is trying to get his revenge against Sergey Spivak because of what Sergey Pavlovich did to him. But uh, but no, I don't think it's too early. Derek Lewis really didn't take too much damage. A lot of us thought it was an early stoppage last fight. And uh, Sergey Spivak really isn't a power puncher, but I, he is a good wrestler, though. So that's going to be uh, curious to see how Derek Lewis is going to handle that as well. Let's go, Black Beast. Uh, one dude that I know, it kind of tears you apart because you're a fan of both. So I want you to break it down for me, and what do you think happens here? Joaquin Buckley taking on action man Chris Curtis. Man, that's a super awesome fight. I think that's a fight for the fans. And both of those guys, they're actually uh, two 185ers that are probably a little too small for 185. They should both probably be fighting at 170, uh, both shorter, but both of them have power. I think uh, Chris Curtis is a more technical boxer between the two of them. Uh, he does have, a, as you know, I love the the rib roasters. He does really good with the body shots and the and the pressure. And he's got a really good chin. Now, I think Joaquin Buckley, what he's improved on here as of late is, is his gas tank because early on in his career, he was going for the big knockouts and was uh, gassing out early on in the fight where I think, as you've seen in the Imabov fight, even though he lost that fight, his best round was the third round and he was able to kind of save his best for last. So, um, But Chris Curtis is also known for being able to pace it out for all three rounds as well. I think uh, Kurt, or, uh, Buckley is the quicker of the two, but I think uh, – Curtis is the more technical, so it's going to be a super fun fight. And uh, whichever card that's on, I'm I'm definitely not going to miss that by any means. Two of your favorites, man. All right, so moving on, we got the return of the brick, man. Jeff Molina taking on Jimmy Flick. That is on January 14th. Already booking January fights, dude. Uh, immediate thoughts on the brick returning? Um, yeah, I, I know that he took that uh, quick retirement, but. I guess he wanted to kind of maybe get his mind right. Um, I think kind of heal from some injuries and, and things like that, but had a had an impressive debut in the UFC and then just kind of called it quits after that, which Flying really surprised time. people. But <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, that was that was nuts to come in, kind of debut like that, and kind of kind of go out leaving people wanting more because uh, you know a big performance like that. A lot of people want to see what you're capable of doing moving forward. So good to see him back and. Uh, uh, and uh, going to be excited to watch him. All right. Um, another one added to January 21st, uh, UFC 283. Munir Lazes taking on Gabriel Bomfim. I don't know if you care too much about that. But uh, one that I do care about, dude, you know I like to talk about her. Josie Ann Nunez. She fights at 145, but she's so tiny. She's going to be fighting Zara Farm. Uh, Zara Farn. I believe she's French, yeah? Uh, yeah. Does she fight at 45? I thought yeah, she fought at 35. <laughs> no, she fights 45, dude. That's why it's hilarious that she's crushing these chicks. She's got no neck and the longest <laughs> arms on earth that she just cracks these chicks. Dude, <laughs> yes. I know who you're talking about. Dude, I had no idea that the... I had no idea that she fought at 40. I thought it was 35 for some reason. And she's definitely... Even if she fought at 35, she'd be undersized. So, like, she looks like she should be fighting at uh 115 dude but she's out there sleeping chicks she's a beast yeah, yeah Jose Ann Nunez always fun to watch uh Vince Morales taking on uh Jose Johnson on November 19th I don't know who Jose Johnson is uh I'm not God, too familiar dude. either Robocop's returning man have you seen who um against yet oh um, no I haven't Robocop is returning January 21st against uh, Brad Tavares, man. So, real Brad Tavares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not picking against Gregor Hyder in that fight. After no all way. the power punches that he just went through, yeah, nah, he's – I feel bad for Brad Tavares. Here we go. Uh, Daniel De Silva versus Victina Salvador added to uh, 
282, December 10th. So the dude from the Contender Series that is rebooked. So that looks like uh, the last of our fight announcements, man. So uh, what did I say before? Kamzat, we had kind of talked about that already. So let's, uh, I guess, let's jump right into like the Bo Nickel topic, dude. He wins last night in uh, impressive fashion, dude. The dude, uh, he like fucking won against was I think seven and one, so not a scrub by any means, uh, dude. Like for sure, like had a winning record. Do I know a lot about him? Do I know if he was actually good enough to be there? Not really. Um, I'm interested to see how Bo can do against someone maybe in the top 15, like, you know, like, but uh, I can really see him getting, I, I know you guys love to say the, uh, like the Sean O'Malley treatment. Um, I think they're going to get him at least three to five fights before like we see him against anyone in the top 10 to 15 at all but um i just want to get your immediate thoughts on the uh signing and uh if you thought it was a little bit too long if he should have already got the contract for the most part i mean you can say that um he should have already gotten a contract i think what the ufc did was smart was that they ended up keeping him around. And I mean, he's been able to put together two flawless performances within a month and a half span time. So all that's really done at this point is built up more excitement for him uh, coming into the UFC, in my opinion. And that performance that he had last night, I mean, we all know that great wrestlers from, you know, great college wrestlers are always going to be a problem. Uh, But the thing that is a little bit different with him is that you see Colby, you see Usman, you see Cormier, you see Cejudo, you see all these guys, and they're great wrestlers. But the thing that they lack is the submission game. Dude, Bo Nickel does not lack in the submission game at all. I mean, the way that he was able to uh, get that takedown, uh, go from the overhand, and then just get the little knee tap trip, uh, get him down, end up going for the, I believe, what was it? The It was a guillotine, uh, and then he was end up uh, flipping it to a, a triangle, and the way he snapped down that triangle, I mean, normal American wrestlers do not have the submission games like that, and um, he's already kind of showing, uh, you know, very high-level stuff in his game already. I do think that they're going to give him a little bit of easier matchups going in so they can try to really build him up because the last thing you want to do with a hot prospect like this is is throw him right into the fire. But I do think that they're going to be able to uh, – or they're going to have a problem on their hands at 185. And, and that goes for just about anybody with, with that type of wrestling uh, and that type of submission game. And all that's going to do is just give him more confidence to uh, evolve in his hands and just to, just to get better. And I think the way that the UFC did it with – uh, you know, waiting to give him the contract. I think they did it smart. Um, and, you know, he's going to get the contract anyway. You know, he's already got it. He's going to be in the UFC. And uh, he's already going to be in the UFC 4 game. So there, there's already a lot of excitement there for him. That was going to be uh, my next question. Is like, we're both UFC 4 fans. Like, me and you played all the time. I stomp your ass as much as I possibly can, you know. But <laughs> straight lies. Hey, I've beat you almost a hundred times, so that's not a lie. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to screen cap the record and post it in here. I was say I I basically have ten times the wins that that he does. But uh, fuck, dude, um, no exaggeration. I forgot, I forgot where I was uh, even going with that, dude. That he was going to be in the UFC game and maybe Raul Rosas as well yeah. being in the. Yeah in the new UFC game, which is actually very pretty surprising to me that they even uh, – Bo Nickel, maybe not so much because he is a, a hot prospect right now. But, um, you know, we were kind of talking about it before we started. Raul Rosas, he, he's impressive for a 17-year-old to be fighting grown men. So I'm not going to take away anything from him in that perspective. But I don't think that his performance in the contender series really warranted him being put in the UFC game – um, sure, he's going to be a good prospect coming up, but didn't really put together a performance that got really anybody excited to want to play with him in the game. And I think uh, there's people, and, and you can mention some of the people that you thought should be in the game, but I think there's people that should be in the game now that's not, and I'm surprised that they put him in. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. It just, it almost seems like they already had it like fucking ready to go. Like, is he like already fucking scanned? Like, like, I, um, I hopped on, uh, like late last night. I was like, let me see if like, he's already on here. He wasn't, but you know, I was like, like, did they already have him scanned fucking ready to go and shit? I was just, um, just kind of ready to see that. I would I'd like much rather have, um, you know, Alex Pereira first, you know, he's about to fight for the championship. Like you said, fucking Adrian Yanez, like before it's like, there's just people that everyone wants, like Fazeev, give us Fazeev. Like <laughs> you're putting these people in that it's like, bro, they just got here. Like, give us the people that we want, but Hey, I'm not EA sports. I can't do shit about it. I would just, I enjoy the game. I love to get my ass beat, but it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah. In the scanning system at the UFC, uh, or the Apex as well, I guess, in the, or I guess the PI in the scanning no system clue. to scan them. Uh, I, I believe I believe that's what they said is that it's located up there. So, as you said, they probably already did have it planned out because they could go fight if the if they got a lot of uh, glamour from their performance, just scan them in real quick and and put them in the game. So, yeah. Uh, dude, there was one other thing that I wanted to say before we got fucking started. <laughs> I know it's not this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I finally saw that there. I was like, why is this on a YouTube? Ch- oh, I know what it was, dude. Um, It was on the fucking Bo Nickel, dude. Actually, uh, where did I see it? it? Like, it was like a slow motion, like fucking replay of it somewhere. I don't know if it was like a video or, or like an Instagram clip. Dude, Bo put dude's lights out and he hit the ground and he woke up. So the dude got knocked out, hit the ground, taken down at the same time as getting knocked out and then getting fucking subbed within one minute, dude. Bo Nickel was a fucking problem without a doubt. I just don't want to see him rush too quick. You know, he's fucking calling for Hamzat. Uh, you know, I, I guess fucking Bo Nickel was unaware that He's calling out Hamzat for not making weight at 170, but Bo fights at 185. So I don't know if he's confused at what class he actually fucking fights at, but a little bit too soon, in my opinion. I think Hamzat would uh, give him some fits with the takedown defense because he's a fucking great wrestler himself, dude. Uh, Swedish national champion wrestler, all that good shit. Couldn't go to the Olympics because no uh, Swedish passport because immigrant or uh refugee from chechnya all that good shit any any other news topics before we uh jump into our uh fights for this weekend man um no i think we pretty much cleaned them up all right dude all right so let's uh jump right into it i'm gonna give you guys the fights uh bottom to top all the fights prelims to main card and then we're gonna give you our picks and uh our opinions on each fight all the way back down uh, main card back down to prelims and however long you want to stay here, you are more than welcome to stay here. So starting off the night, dude, uh, we've got Randy Costa taking on Guido Canetti. I didn't know Guido Canetti was still in the UFC. The dude's mad fucking old at this point. Uh, one of Dorian's favorite ones that he likes to go to. Uh, I don't know a lot about her, but apparently she likes to arm bar all of my picks. So Julia, Julia Stoliarenko taking on Chelsea Chandler. I don't know shit about uh, fucking Chelsea Chandler, dude. Maxim Grishin uh, taking on Felipe Lenz that does not need to be in the UFC. If you know how I feel about Jamie Pickett, uh, you can apply that to Felipe Lenz as well. Brendan Allen taking on Christoph Jocko. Joaquin Silva taking on Jesse Ronson uh, coming off of a USADA suspension and looked awful in his last fight. Uh, Jessica Pinney taking on Tabitha Ricci. What are we doing here? Um, Alexi Olenek taking on Alir Latifi. I have a feeling me and Dorian might have different picks on that fight. Um, Mike Davis taking on Slava Klaus. Uh, Vyacheslav Borishev. John Castaneda taking on Daniel Santos. Sadiq Yusuf taking on Don Shanus as a massive underdog. Uh, Hani Barcelos also don't feel that confident about i don't feel like he's that good taking on trevin five star jones randy brown taking on francisco trinaldo in the co-main event dude in our main event of the night mckenzie dern taking on yan jiao not dude so some names but we also got some fights that are like dude like 
Randy Brown versus Francisco Tr- uh, <laughs> Trinado in our co-main event. Like, what what are we doing here for our fucking co-main event? Like, I dude, and, <laughs> and Francisco Trinado is how? Oh, dude, he's forty four. I was just looking at it. He is forty four. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah, dude. It's like I I would have much rather had like you change around some names to get some better matchups. You know, like I just feel like there was better matchups to be made for this card. And it's like you you're like fucking matching up a pretty solid prospect in fucking Randy Costa. You have him on the opening fight of the prelims against a Guido Canetti. Like, what what are we doing here? Like I, I feel like that it could be higher on the card and not against Guido like fucking Guido Canetti here. So we'll start there at the main event, dude. Are we gonna have like fucking different picks off the jump? What do you think? Yeah or no? Because you know who I'm going for. Uh, potentially, potentially. Honestly, I'm I'm still looking at it. I'm still kind of mulling back and forth. On, oh wow! On Surprising. Let me let me give I'm you my thoughts mulling. uh and opinions on this fight in the co-main event, Mackenzie Dern. I mean, in the main event, uh, Mackenzie Dern versus uh Yan Jaonan, dude. Uh, Yan Jaonan's got pretty solid takedown defense. Uh, she hasn't been taken down too many times outside of Carlos Sparza that just fucking had a field day with her but the issue is when she is on the ground dude she looks like she has no clue what to do she looks like greg hardy down there she was like how do i fucking get up i have no idea and Mackenzie dern if she has you on the ground that's an issue with you with that's an issue um like no matter who you are in the division you could have great ground defense and if she has you on the ground that's a fucking problem that being said dude Mackenzie dern doesn't i guess doesn't need to get her to the ground dude she can have her up against the fence hop on her back a la or uh like fucking visha <laughs> via tisha torres dude uh i don't feel like unless yan jao nan can really keep her distance and out striker uh, dern should have this in the bag in my opinion no matter what uh i'm going dern via submission because that's how I go every single darn fight. How are you going here, man? Man, I, I think this is a really tough fight. I do think that uh, for, of course, the, the biggest aspect in, into this is the submission game from Dern and the striking game versus Jan. And I do think that, as you said, Jan has been able to, to display really good takedown defense, but that Sparza fight, Carlos Sparza is, is a dog when it comes to the wrestling. Um, I actually think she's probably the best wrestler in the division right now. I do think that Mackenzie Dern, her submissions are super lethal. And I know that she could get the back takes or, or something like that from the fence. I do think Jan's going to be a little bit more ready for that. Uh, Mackenzie Dern's takedowns aren't the the greatest. I, I think that Jan is obviously going to be the better striker. I think she's going to be a little bit quicker. Mackenzie Dern does when she tries to get into range. She does kind of tend to leave her head in one place, leaving herself to be an open target to get hit, especially off of a counter fighter. Um, I think that Jan, uh, I think she's going to be a little bit quicker. I actually think she's going to be able to get the decision win. Um, so give me uh, give me Jan Shannon. It wouldn't surprise me, dude. I just, I don't know. It's just, dude, I thought, like Jan beat Rodriguez and I had a bet for Rodriguez, dude. <laughs> I was like, I like I honestly thought fucking Jan won that fight. Um uh, it's just dude, I, Jan looks so bad on the ground against like Asparza, and it's just glaring, dude. It's just like and I know McKenzie Dern doesn't have the greatest takedowns, dude, but all of her fights end up there. Like in every single one of her fights. It's on the ground at some point. It, it just ends up there. So, that being said, dude, when this fight ends up on the ground, Mackenzie Dern's going to get that sub. That's how I'm going. Dorian's going Jan Jaonan. Anything else on this one, or are you going to move on down to the co-main event? Uh, yeah, we can we can move on down. All right. Randy Brown taking on Francisco Trinaldo, dude. Um, Randy Brown should get this done, you know, in um, all reality. But, dude... <sighs> I've seen Francisco Tronado put people's lights out and the way Randy Brown backs away from shots. Like he does the, 
dude, if Francisco Gernardo throws an overhand at that exact point, dude, Randy Brown's done for. I've seen Francisco put too many people out, and I've seen <coughs> excuse me, and I've seen Randy Brown put out. He looked pretty good against fucking Chaos Williams um, in his like last fight. Defense pretty solid. Um, Randy Brown should get this done, but I'm going to throw it out there. It wouldn't surprise me if Francisco Trinado put his lights out. How do you see this one going? Um, yeah, and I, I'm I'm thinking sort of the same. But remember going back in that Chaos uh, Williams and Randy Brown fight. Uh, uh, Chaos Williams dropped him there in in that third because round. Of what remember, he does he was, the yeah he, because he just, the defense where he's kind of he's doing the shoulder roll and he's like you know he's trying to do the lean like he's like he's doing the snake or something you know he's doing the snake with the with the roll and the punches and he ended up getting caught so francisco trinado is a guy who's a power puncher dude yeah, i mean he hurt danny roberts at 170 i mean ja herbert um and this is here just as of recently and he's 44 years old still putting out uh dudes like that but i do think randy costa is going to be the slicker fighter he's going to yeah. have the the who did I say? Randy Costa. We'll talk about him later. Oh, uh, <laughs> Randy, yeah, Randy, uh, yeah. I mixed the two Randys up, but uh, I do think Randy Brown is going to be a little bit more the the slicker of the two. And uh, yeah, Randy Brown gets it done easy. Okay, cool, cool. Moving on down to the next one, Honey Barcelo's taking on Trevin Five Star Jones, dude. I feel like a lot of people, or most people, are high on Honey Barcelo's, dude. But to me, just not been impressed at all, dude. He's looked semi okay, dude. On the other hand, Trevin Five Star Jones, um, he's shown flashes of brilliance, but at the same time, he's got knocked out too. But only against, I mean, I'm not sure if he's gotten fucking knocked out. Maybe I don't remember, but he's only gotten beaten by you know, like solid people. Uh, Javid Bashar fucking comes to mind, dude, and he's really fucking good. Uh, I don't think Hani Barcelos is as good as, like, fucking Javid is. Uh, I'm going to go with the underdog here. I'm going Trevin Jones. How about you, man? Um, I, I think that Hani Barcelos, he, he's super solid. I think that's that's the biggest thing. And he's got the win over Saeed and Mark Medoff back in the day. So maybe people just ride off the coattails of that. Trevin Jones is going to be the more explosive fighter, and he's going to have more power between the two. He's definitely capable of putting out Honey Barcelos, but I think I've seen him. Uh, I've, I've seen too many downs of uh, him more than against, I have ups. Um, Saeed Cube Kakramanov was his other loss, I think, which is also yeah. a really fucking good guy. So that's his only like two two losses, I think. Is he yeah. lost twice? But I, oh no, he's lost. I've seen two. <laughs> I've I've seen a couple of downs from him more than I have ups, and I think Hani is really a uh, solid. So I I think Barcelos is going to be able to. Uh, I think he'll be able to basically be the more technical fighter and get the decision. All right, I'm not sure if I want to put this one in the uh, in the picks for the week, just because I think I'm just maybe going off of how much I don't like Hani, but one that I know that I have well. We'll have at least uh, fucking three by the end of the day. One that I really want to pick different on uh, is that uh, Alir TV versus Alexia Olenek because there's no way in hell Doran's picking Alexia Olenek in that fight. <laughs> uh, don't say that because that, it is Alir Latifi, So Hey, you know. All right, moving on down. We might have that one. Um, dude, maybe you can uh, – dude – Sadiq Yusuf taking on John Shanus. Um, Don Shanus. Uh, dude, I maybe I was like, was I listening to James Krause's podcast? And he said like that, like fucking Don Shanus was like one of his guys. Maybe, I'm not sure, but fucking, it, it wasn't last week, but a few weeks ago now, dude, he had a big underdog again against uh, fucking Daniel Zellhuber. It was Trey Ogden versus like fucking Daniel Zellhuber massive underdog dude and just the game plan against um like a young guy that just didn't didn't really have the experience uh on the other hand dude we got kind of the opposite here we got a ufc vet at this point like sadiq yusuf 
taking on UFC newcomer. Uh, but dude, from what I've heard about Don Chain is that he is like balls to the wall, dude. He's 100% getting the takedown 100% of the time. And if he doesn't, he's going to keep trying and he's got the gas tank. My thing is, Sadiq Yusuf has shown struggles off his back, dude. And he's like a minus a thousand favorite, dude. Is it worth a shot as like at fucking Don Chanis to fucking maybe get like um a decision win? Or uh like should we just hope this one goes over fucking 1.5? How do you see this one going? Obviously, Sadiq Yusuf should fucking get the dub. I'm definitely not picking on on this one um, either way one because like Sadiq Yusuf never impressed me he is super Sadiq Yusuf but he is going up against shameless Don Chanis dude I was say I know you're a stickler for the middle names I know you love uh I know you love the or the nicknames I know you love the, the nicknames dude that's how I remember but, uh, them, dude. but no <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I I do think that Sadiq should be able to get it done. Um, I, I don't know much about Don Sheamus. I, I I'll take your word for it as far as you know him but being a great wrestler. What throws me off I, is like he's a thousand favorite. Why is Sadiq Yusuf a thousand favorite over anyone in like in the UFC? It doesn't matter who it, who it is. He shouldn't be that big. I mean, a favorite. It, as far as the gambling perspective, I definitely get your point. Um, now it as far as you know the the matchup goes. Uh, Don Sheamus, he is taking this fight on super short notice, and they even had to uh, schedule this fight about a week or two. Uh, they had to postpone it about a week or two to give Don Sheamus enough time uh, to get ready for the fight because Sadiq was supposed to fight uh, Chikadze. But I do think that Sadiq is a little bit more, you know, just UFC experience at this point. So I do think that Sadiq should be able to should be able to get the dub. He just dropped the ball a lot, and I wouldn't feel comfortable not even putting him, like, in a parlay, dude. I would not put Sadiq Yusuf in my fucking parlay. One, it ain't going to help that much. <laughs> like, and he, he's a massive favorite I think liability. His only, lo- his only loss in the UFC is to Arnold Allen. I wouldn't say he's came up short a lot. Yeah, but he's only lost he's, one fight. He's not been in – he's been taken down a whole lot. That's my thing. He's <sighs> – I've seen him show weakness. How about that? Uh, I mean, he's, he was undefeated in the UFC before that Arnold Allen fight, and he's only got one loss. I mean, he's not I mean, impressed. he's been impressive. Not yeah, impressed. I mean, he it, not impressed. I mean, I, I I I guess I guess, but all right, moving on down. Uh, John Castaneda taking on Daniel Santos, dude. Uh, I got to be honest, I'm not too familiar with either one of these guys. Uh, how how about you, man? I don't really have a have a strong feel either way. If I had to pick, I would go John Castaneda just because of the experience. 19 and 5 taking on the uh, the 9 and 2 Daniel Santos. Yeah, I I cannot lie. I feel like Daniel Santos, I I remember that that name from somewhere, but but other than that, yeah, as far as being familiar with either or couldn't really tell you a thing. Uh, <laughs> let's go, John thing. Castaneda. I got a hell of a shit ton of experience. One that Dorian should know because I had to remind him last week. Or if not, let me set it up for y'all. <clears throat> Mike Davis taking on Vicious Borishev, aka Slava Claus. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mike Davis, uh, one or let me set it up like this. Every year, Tiger Muay Thai has a uh, tournament for a spot to train there uh all expenses paid and you can stay there uh i believe it's for a year maybe something like that mike davis won that tournament vicious law of is the striking coach at team alpha male the kickboxing coach so we have two very high level strikers here taking on one another um Mike Davis does have solid takedowns. Vyacheslav Borishev has shown weakness in his last fight against Mark DeCasey, but Mark DeCasey has apparently transformed to an all-American fucking wrestler at this point. Um, I could only assume that Vyacheslav Borishev takedown defense has gotten better because he does train at Team Alpha Male. I would think he's been working on that. Um, what this is really going to come down to is, is Mike Davis going to shoot for a takedown, and can he get that? If not, dude, this fight could go either fucking way. I have to slightly lean Vyacheslav Borishev just because I I like it striking a little bit more. It comes to my mind uh, a tad bit quicker. 
I have to like look back into Mike Davis. Like, who is fucking Mike Davis? He um he also doesn't fight that often either. So uh, I guess I'm going vicious all Borishev here. Break down this fight for me, and who are you going? Um, I I think you you broke it down, you know, pretty beautifully as far as the way they match up against one another. Um, Mike Davis is he's a super explosive striker, and he's got a lot of power. Um, and I, I do think that he's going to be very dangerous coming into this fight because that. As you said, he's not uh, one that fights super active, but he's still uh, fairly young. And I do think that uh, Borshev, he's a, he's a little bit inexperienced. So this could be, you know, one of those moments where a young prospect like Borshev could be set up for failure against someone like Mike Davis, who's a who's a hard puncher. But I do think that Borshev, you know, he he is uh, a little bit more the the fresher fighter as as in being more active here as of recently. And um, I do think Mike Davis is taking this fight on pretty short notice as well. So Wait, he was, um, um, was going to fight fucking Euro Schmedic, but he f- fell out. So um, like fucking Vicious Love is the one fucking taking it on, I guess. Late notice. Oh, see, see, I thought it was the other way around. I thought yeah. Euros Medic was supposed to fight Borshev and mm-hmm. Mike Davis took this fight on short notice. No. Oh, okay. So that actually that actually changes things for me a little bit because I thought it was vice versa. Um, you know what? That actually changed my mind. I, I actually think I actually go Mike Davis because mm-hmm. that to me that sounds like that he was prepared for a fight uh already. So uh, that means he's already in that means he's in fight shape for me. And I think he's a little more experienced. So yeah, uh, considering that, that little nugget you just dropped there for me. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna pick Mike Davis. All right. So we, we do have three different ones, but uh, we'll, we'll go on now and we'll pick our best three different ones. The maybe what we feel the most confident on to put up the pick champ this week. Uh, so moving on down uh, one that I cannot wait to talk about Alexi Olenek taking on, Alir beefy Latifi dude, the heavyweight <laughs> Alir Latifi dude, the boa constrictor dude can sub anyone, dude. I don't care who it is. Um, last time you picked against them, you said, I don't see how Alexio Linick wins this fight. He was taking on Jared Vandera, and I said, I don't see how Jared Vandera wins this fucking fight, Alexio Linick. If he gets taken down, he's super active from the bottom. He's scrambling. He's looking for legs. You won't find a still um, Alexi Olenek on the ground. And I got to be honest, his striking looked, I don't want to say good, but for Alexi Olenek, his striking seems to be improving, dude. He's got crazy long arms. Once again, dude, I'm going Alexi Olenek here. Um if Alir Latifi tries to take him down and just lay on him, which Alir Latifi seems to do, that's his thing, is just wasting time in fucking uh, controlling positions, if you will. Uh, I think he's going to make the mistake. He might tire himself out trying to keep a hold of the older, more scrambly Alexi Olenek. Both these dudes aren't that big. Alir Latifi doesn't have a neck, though. That's my thing. Um, but... Can Alexi Olene get that scarf hold on that no neck Alir Latifi? I say so. I'm going Alexi Olene here. How, who are you going here, man? Uh, looking at the matchup, I know you're a big Alexi Olene fan, and, and I Boa think uh, Alir Latifi. Yeah, and he's <laughs> he's out, he, he's put on some fun fights, and you want to talk about experience, dude? I mean, you're talking what 77 fights the dude's had at this point. Um, I mean, just fought you. I mean, he's fought from all the way down from middleweight all the way up to, to heavyweight, dude. He fought Chael Sonnen back in the day, and uh, and Chael Sonnen actually beat him in a decision, too. Um, if you didn't know that, but uh, but for I, I think for this matchup, Ali Latifi, the dude is built like a brick shit house. Um, even that he's 40 years old as well, but he's built like a uh, <laughs> John Annick says he's built like a woodshed because he's just short and wide and that dude he he's built like a damn brick house and uh i I do think with him with his wrestling i think he'll be a little bit more slicker um not going to be as susceptible to the uh not as susceptible to the submissions as maybe like a jerry van der would be um and i I do think that he's going to be a little bit more of the slicker striker because 
Aaliyah Latifi throws them punches with them straight arms, and he throws them little them damn clubbers, and he's throwing that damn thing around like that. Um, when he gets going, he can get going, but man, his striking is kind of hard to watch sometimes. So I do think Aaliyah Latifi gets the win here. Okay, so we got another different one, dude. So I like it. I like it. We're for sure having the main event in that one in there, man. One of my two favorite fights to pick. I, I love picking against you when I pick like Mackenzie Thurn, and I love picking against you when I pick Alexi Olenek, dude. They just two that that continue to keep hitting for me, man. I'm I don't win them all, but I feel like when I pick those fighters and you pick uh, like against them, it's just like automatic dub every time, dude. But here we go, moving on down, dude. Uh, one that, dude, I'm not convinced this fight's gonna happen, dude. Jessica Penne is mad old at this point. Um, taking on the baby shark, uh, Tabitha Ricci, dude. Jessica Penne was on the 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 inaugural 115 tough, yeah, like way back in the day, like way way back. Yeah, so that was, dude, that was the one tough that I, I think I watched it twice now. To be honest, like I, I watched the whole yeah. thing twice just because it was the one that was like. I feel like it was the best tough, like because it was all, all good fighters from like other organizations, like, f- like or, or it was like all from like Invicta, like, like fucking they just took like the entire like, um, Invicta roster and fucking on the tough show, like it was like some shit like that, like fucking Carla was already like the champion of um Invicta and then. You know, she ends up fucking fucking beating Rose for the championship at the end. But anyway, this fight, dude, Jessica Penne uh, taking on the baby shark, Tabitha Ricci, dude. If it was anyone else, dude, I've hit on this multiple times. If it was anyone else that has any um, weakness to being choked at all, I'm doing Jessica Penne via sub, dude, because she's uh, she's like the female Aljamain Sterling, dude. She'll hop on your back and fucking stay there. She's... She'll ride your back around the whole fucking round. Tabitha Ricci, on the other hand, she's a solid black belt. She's only lost once to Manon Fury, dude. Once, yeah. She's seven to one or seven and two. Yeah, seven to one. She lost to Manon Fury, dude. And she pretty much held her own a weight class up. She did get beat up, but she lasted a long time, dude. So I just don't see any way Jessica Pine can beat her, dude. The fucking baby sharks, a black belt as well. I, I maybe even a fucking Tabitha late round two, early round three finish somewhere like round three. I'm going Tabitha Ricci here. I assume you're going the same way. Um, yeah, I, I think Tabitha Ricci just be, uh, I think she'll be just a little bit quicker. Jessica Panay, if she doesn't get the sub, I do think it, it'll be a, a long night for her. her striking hasn't been the greatest, but. She is slick with the submissions, but I think Ricci's going to be a little bit more experienced or uh, a little bit more quicker, I'm sorry. And I, I think that she's going to be able to get the win. All right. Are you convinced that fight's going to happen yet? Because, dude, Jessica Penne seems to, like, last minute, like, ah, oh, no, not not this time. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm going to hold the faith. I'm going to hold the faith for now. All right, dude. Uh, I guess one, two that I'm not really uh, – too familiar with uh joaquin silva taking on jesse ronson dude uh do you do you have anything to say here i guess i really don't know a whole bunch uh, um aside uh, from i know joaquin like, like jesse I, I, ronson uh in his maybe like his last fight came off of a suspension and then didn't look too good yeah i the one i really know more about is joaquin silva but okay you know talking about up and down performances i mean he hasn't really had the greatest performances. I remember he got knocked out by Nasdaq hack for us a couple of years ago, but other than <laughs> that, I'm not too, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not super familiar with, with, with either or. Yeah. But walking himself is definitely taking some lumps in the UFC. That's all I really know. Yeah. So, uh, me and Dorian are both not too familiar with either one of these fires. Jesse Ronson, 21 and 11, dude. What an odd record to be in the UFC though. Uh, moving on down, dude. One that always, whenever this is one that I know Dorian is waiting to pick on because whenever I pick this guy, Dorian wins. Uh, Brendan Allen taking on uh, Christoph Jocko, dude. Um, I'm going Brendan Allen here just because I'm an all-in fan, dude. 
uh, Brendan Allen. I pick him every single time. He's shown flashes of brilliance, dude. He's only 26 still. The dude's still mad fucking young. Fights at 185 um, and at 205. Uh, Maxim Grishin, on the other hand, he's got good takedown defense and pretty much – or uh, my bad, <laughs> Christoph Jocko. On the other hand, I was like, did I say I like fucking Brendan Allen versus I like fucking Maxim Griffin? Maxim Grishin. Yeah, you said it. You said it just now. Anyway. Not 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 introducing it, but just now. Okay, too. yeah. But Christoph Jocko, dude, he's really good. Uh, he, he's got solid takedown defense, dude. He's he has a hard time fucking taking him down. Pretty much wherever fucking Christoph Jocko wants the fight to be that's where the fight's at so it kind of gives me a whole uh kind of gives me worry but on the other hand i think brendan allen striking is a little bit i don't want to say better he's not more powerful but he is more active and he's a lot quicker than christoph jocko is i'm going brendan allen here you going christoph jocko and if you are why um, I actually am going Chris off Jocko, and I think uh, I know I know you were kind of smelling that one out there, but uh, but no, I, I think the reason why is that I do think I agree with you. Jocko has really good takedown defense. I think he's kind of been able to put it together a little bit as of late. Outside of the Str- Sean Strickland loss, I, I think he's won like maybe five out of his last six or, or something like that. He's been able to kind of string together a couple of good performances. And I think the biggest thing is that Chris off Jocko has really good footwork. I don't think he's going to be a still target. I think Brendan Allen, I don't think he's going to be the quicker fighter. He's going to have the more power, but I think for him, his biggest thing is he gets flat footed and he gets caught in exchanges a lot, similar to how he did with, uh, with Chris Curtis and Sean Strickland. He just gets caught in these exchanges and uh, ends up getting clipped, and he gets flat-footed in those exchanges as well. And I don't think Chris Jocko has the power to put him out, but I do think that he's going to be able to be in and out, land some jabs, land some leg kicks, land some teeth kicks, couple body shots, get out of danger, and I think he'll be able to get a decision. So we for sure have our three this week, man. Dorian is probably going to win this one because I feel like fucking Brennan Allen drops the ball on it every time, but I'm still picking him because I have faith in him. Uh, hey, we got five disagreements if you want to throw all five in there. No, nah, no. Nah. It is a fucking <laughs> – one, one of these fucking small cards, dude. I'm not confident on the the ones up top, dude. Uh, fucking Randy – or uh, like the Honey Barcelos fight. I'm not, not too confident on that, to be honest. Like, I'm not impressed by him, but it's – it's like I'm not a – Five Star Jones fan, to be honest. Like, it, I'm not impressed by him either. Uh, not going to be. I'm not impressed by your performance. Exactly. So, uh, moving on down, dude. Uh, Maxim Grisham. There we go. Taking on Felipe Lenz. Got to go, Maxim Griffin here because Felipe Lenz is um not good, dude. He's reminds me of the skill level of Jamie Pickett, dude. Just not good. I don't think he belongs in the UFC. Uh just gotten beat multiple times <laughs> not good in my opinion uh take away on this fight dude um yeah i think keep it short and sweet felipe lens he's he's had a lot of ups and downs in the ufc as well and maxine grissom uh maxine grisham uh let me try to get that right Tony but uh Mister. definitely as far as yeah just a little bit but uh as far as uh, experience dude what does he have about 43 fights right now so um just absolutely crazy um to see that he's got that many fights and um shoot he's on uh 38 i didn't realize he was that old i thought he's about 35 36 but uh but yeah both of them are actually pretty old at this point didn't realize felipe lens is 37 either but uh give me maxine grisham okay both going maxine grisham there one dude that i always pick against her and she always arm bars who i pick dorian always picks her to win so I'm going to ride with Dorian this time because I don't feel like he knows a lot about Chelsea Chandler, just like me. I don't know shit about Chelsea Chandler. Julia Stoyarenko, uh via armbar is the way I see this going. Um, I've maybe heard a few things about fucking Chelsea Chandler, which means uh, – I mean, not which means. Um, I think I heard that she's solid wrestler, which means she goes for takedowns, which that feeds right into Julia Stoyarenko's plan. Julia Stolarenko about arm bars, how I'm going. I don't know shit about Chelsea Chandler, though. <laughs> yeah, I actually uh, – I couldn't have said it any better. I, I think uh, Stolarenko, a little more experience in the UFC, 
and uh, she's super slick with the Mar Mars when she when she gets them, man. So yeah, I, I th- give me Sully Rinka. Do you know anything about Chelsea Chandler or no? Not a damn thing. <laughs> and uh, one <laughs> that surprised me that it's opening up the prelims, dude. Uh, Randy Costa taking on Guido Canetti, dude. Randy Costa. Pretty solid around one fighter. Uh, if it goes past round one, he might lose. Uh, but hopefully he can get it in check, dude. Like, he's still young. I just feel like if he can get his pacing under control, the dude's a problem. Um, Randy Costa, way younger here, should really get this done. But, dude, if it starts going later on in the fight, Guido Canetti, uh, the dude's got power, dude. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if Guido Canetti got this uh, done like later on round two, but I'm going Randy Costa here. How about you? Yeah, he put away your boy Chris Messino in that, in that last fight, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say that. But, uh, nah, he uh, he put away Moutinho in his last fight, and he was a pretty big underdog going into that fight, too, just because he's older. But he does have pretty big power for him to be uh, older in that weight class, to be down at 135. But Randy Casa should be the, the quicker fighter. Definitely got the reach advantage. He throws uh, big kicks. Uh, be, be, uh, be on the lookout for one of those. He th- kind of throws it similar to Leon. He'll throw the jab and throw the throw the head kick behind it as well. He's super slick with that. So be on the lookout for one of those. I think Randy Costa can potentially get a knockout here. All right, fair enough. Dorian going on Randy Costa as well. So just to announce it, our three different picks of the week. We are going uh, the main event, Mackenzie Dern taking on Jan Jonan. Dude, how often is it that we pick different on the like on the main event? It's damn near every single week, yeah? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah just, just about the main event, you know. But you know who add the add right spice, here, add you know, spice to it. Though. You know who's the right picker over here. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, add, it adds a little spice to it at the end of the cards. So. In indeed, indeed, dude. So uh, the next one that we are going to go different on is uh, Alexio Olenek taking on Alir Latifi. Dorian going Alir Latifi. I'm going Alexio Olenek. May backfire on me, dude, but it's all right. In our last one, dude, we are going Brendan Allen Allen taking on Christoph Jocko, dude. So let me get some uh just odds real quick just to see. Um, are we am I picking the underdogs? Am I picking the favorites this week? I know like Mackenzie Darren's a pretty solid favorite though. Yeah, I, I, I believe uh Latifi should be a pretty sizable favorite too. And I, yeah, I last I Last I looked, Jotka was a favorite, but he yeah, was he probably – I think he was like – yeah, he was like a minus 150 or so. That yeah. was where I, where I seen it last. Right now, this is all on uh, DraftKings. Dorian does bet FanDuel. Occasionally, I'll bet FanDuel. But just for future references, I always throw out DraftKings numbers. Dorian most of the time throws out those FanDuel numbers. That's what we bet over here on this show. Not sponsored, by the way, but, hey, if y'all do want to sponsor us, just, hey, fucking hit us up. You know, we ain't got no problem. And I'm not opposed <laughs> to betting on DraftKings if uh, <laughs> if they're coming through with the bag. So just, just keep that in mind, DraftKings. But FanDuel, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been riding with y'all for a little bit now. So come on now. Y'all got plenty up. Yeah, right now on DraftKings, Christoph Jocko, a minus 120 favorite over the plus 100, Brendan Allen. Uh, Alir Latifi, minus 175 over the plus 150, uh, Alexi Olenek. And uh, Mackenzie Dern, minus 225 over plus 190, Jan Jonan. So I'm taking two underdogs this week, one kind of close. Um, Doran got uh, two favorites this week, and then – but is taking the biggest underdog in um, Jan Jonan versus Mackenzie Darren. Do anything else before we get out of here, man? Just you, do you got any fucking solid parlays for the people? Because, dude, I, I still don't think I have anything. I don't have props outside like the main events, though, right now. Uh, yeah, well, that's all I was going to say. There's no other props out as of right now because, as you said, that's still a Ranko submission. Waiting um, on it, dude. Gonna be real, waiting. gonna be real, gonna be real dude. juicy to put on some parlays. So. I want to have a three sub parlay: Julia Stolyarenko via sub, Alexi Olenek via sub, and Mackenzie Dern via sub. You know, I'm going for the trifecta of subs. I'm definitely gonna throw that in a parlay, but waiting on those props to open up. Yeah, dude, I don't got uh, anything else to 
if I can say here. You guys enjoy the new studio. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, should be most of the way finished now. We got just a just a quick little recap real quick. We got the fight that started off the podcast right here, the one that really made us do it, Connor versus Dustin too. We got the BML, BMF belt back here. We got the Jorge Masvidal knee back there. Uh, John Jones versus DC up here. We got the Patty the Batty teabag over Jordan Levitt. A few other shit in the background. I'll go over it in a different video. Dorian's like, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to get out of here. But that's going to be all from here this time. Remember, show that like button what's up. Pretend it's Dana White for not giving us any fights this past weekend. Comments are always appreciated down below. Subscribe if you are not. Matt Anderson, Dorian Rhodes is on the other side of your screen. And we'll catch y'all next week. This is the Golden Octagon MMA podcast. And we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.